Welcome back to the Manage to Win podcast. I'm your host, David Russell. Today's episode is sponsored by Habitly.com. Let me ask you about two soft skills. One is empathy and one is character. And in a lot of organizations, we do not see enough empathy and character exhibited by the leaders or people in an organization. If you think maybe some people in your organization or yourself could demonstrate more empathy for others or work on their character a little bit, you can have good character and still work on it. I'm not saying everybody's bad. Check out Habitly.com. Those are just two of the courses that are on there. They have very high value. Soft skills are not trained as much as they used to be in families, in schools, in other businesses. It is a competitive edge. So check out Habitly.com for seven days free. Today's episode is with Billy Price of Billy'sFootwear.com. Billy, when he was 18 years old, attending college, fell out of college window and broke his neck and his back, changed his life forever. And the way circumstances rolled, he then reconnected with a childhood friend and they created Billy Footwear and they are changing the world of many people. And he has some great tips for leaders. Let's dive into this conversation, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Billy, I'm really glad to have you on the show. You've got a unique story. You've also had tremendous success. So will you please introduce yourself to the audience, and then let's dive into the conversation. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, My name is Billy Price. I am the co-founder of a shoe company called Billy Footwear uh, based out of Seattle, Washington. Wow. And so what what led you to this? What what was your journey? <laughs> well, I wish I had a quick uh, elevator answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I I fell out of a window. <laughs> Let's start there. I fell out of a window when I was 18 years old as a freshman in college. And uh, I broke my neck and my lower back. And uh, when that happened, my world changed in a real hurry. There were so many things I used to be able to do that I could no longer do. And uh, long story short, putting on shoes is one of those things. And uh, really out in the marketplace, there wasn't anything that I felt looked good enough um, that I could, uh, well, let me rephrase that. Looking out in the market, there was nothing I could put on independently that still looked good. If I were to put on shoes that I could use my limited hand dexterity, it was going to require some like grotesque, like oversized shoe or um, using hook and loop, which I wasn't really interested in. And uh, it just being in a wheelchair, I already started to feel a little bit different. So the last thing I wanted to do is like wear something that made me feel even more different. So I teamed with a buddy. We did something about it and started Billy Footwear. So what it for the, since we have a ton of listeners, not many viewers, and we're not really showing product here, but what is uh, different about Billy Footwear that people should notice? Yeah, great question. So the main difference between our shoes and other, I mean, if you look at just a, our shoes side by side next to something else like Vans or Converse or something like that, they will look very similar. However, um, our shoe incorporates a zipper, which goes on the outside and it goes around the toe, which allows the whole upper of the shoe to actually fold over and you can drop your foot in unobstructed. You're actually stepping into your shoe. So you don't have to take your toe and like try to shove it in there. Um, this is the type of situation where you can either go toe first, flat foot, you can actually lead with your heel because it's completely unobstructed. And the importance behind that was me um, having like no function really for the from the nipple line down. It was very challenging for me to have to shove my foot into a shoe. We needed to have like a different type of entry point for shoes. And uh, that's what we came up with. And it's uh, it's really been a home run. It's amazing. So so that's all at bo- billyfootwear.com, right? That is correct. Billyfootwear.com yeah. is our mothership. And uh, there's a lot of shoes on there for sure. Yeah, it looked like there's just a ton and all kinds of designs. I mean, I'm not a shoe guy, but even just looking at it, I was like, wow, if you're into shoes, I have to have my 15-year-old son look at it because he's super into shoes. I mean, he has a taste. It's like, you know, I want these... He actually, you know, he admires people, guys that collect, you know, like certain types of basketball shoes or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sne- I mean, the sneakerhead community, I mean, it is it is absolutely insane. I mean, it makes my head spin. But I mean, we've got some great shoes on the site right now. We also have some really trendy stuff coming in in the next month or so, which uh, I'm sure would be a, a real hit for your son, too. 
<laughs> That's great. So talk to me about this journey of, I mean, your life, life changed and then you decided to be an entrepreneur and uh, you had this buddy. Can you talk to me about that relationship for a moment? Because partnerships can be so difficult and you only said a few words, but the tone of your words and everything just sounds like this is a lifelong friend. <laughs> Indeed, very much so. Uh, and you couldn't be more correct. So my, it was Darren Donaldson and myself were the two co-founders. And uh, we grew up together. We rode the bus together to school, known each other a very, very, very long time. And uh, as life would have it, though, our paths kind of got separated. And there was a Christmas party in 2012 that uh, we, he invited me over to his house because he was having a bunch of people over. And uh, as we were catching up, um, he was telling me about the things he was working on which was a shoe project. He just kind of challenged himself to learn how to do something of which he had never done before. And uh, we started working on his own boot design. Um, it's kind of a sideline, it's a side hustle. And uh, when he was telling me this, it got me really, really excited because one, it was something I knew nothing about. But secondly, it gave me the opportunity to kind of pitch my idea. And I said, Darren, you know, since being in a wheelchair, I've never been able to put my shoes on by myself. And I uh, kind of threw my idea at him. And uh, that was enough to get him excited um, and uh, just kind of plant that seed. He made, a, he made a drawing, kind of a tech pack. We sent it off to the factory, or the, I should say, the agent that he was working with for his own project. They made a sample. And uh, when he gifted it to me, um, I was 36 years old. And it looked exactly like our drawing. But at 36, I was able to put my shoes on again by myself and uh, took back that independence. I broke my neck at 18. I put my shoes on at 36. So a half a lifetime later, you know, this 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 gift was upon me to be able to take back that independence. And it was so special. We knew we had to share it with the world. Do you have any idea what percentage of your sales go to people that have some type of disability versus, you know, could could tie up any shoe? I love that question because it's so it's so important. Right now it's about 50-50. It's it's difficult to measure. Um, because it's not like, it's not like two boxes, um, because everyone really loves a convenient shoe. It can be difficult to kind of measure that, but from what we can tell based on reviews, based on engagement, um, it's about 50, 50, which we absolutely are so stoked on that number because yeah. when Darren and I first thought about this brand going into the marketplace, we knew for us to be able to survive as a shoe company or just as a small business for that matter. We had to be one, disruptive in the marketplace, and two, be able to cast as big a net as possible to be able to you know, have as many eyeballs as possible, see the brand, and hopefully be excited about the brand. So the last thing we wanted to do is create something that was really, I guess, pigeonholed as adaptive. We wanted to have something that was more of a universal design, having something that could sit on the shelves of major retailers and uh, anybody would want to wear it. But... If someone like myself that needed it more from a functional standpoint, they could also be one empowered and to regain that independence. I, I think that's awesome. And I'm curious, is there anything you've done as an organization or in the branding where you are um, engaging with people of disabilities that have different than your own or giving back or something like that, that, that um, really communicates the message that, hey, we have a very high quality product, but we're also doing, you know, these good works for the common good type of thing. We do. We certainly do. And we, and we have we have retail partners and association partners. And when I say associate partners, it's more collaborations across the board of all abilities and all demographics. So, uh, you know, in, in, including our social following, just our social following, it's on um you know, the, there's lots of folks that have disabilities that support the brand and, you know, and not. We do have a lot of collaborations going with, um, you know, nonprofit organizations uh, that are more of like the rare community, like some sort of like chromosome deficiency or some sort of duplication or maybe ALS or may it be cerebral palsy or we even had a collab or we have a collaboration with Special Olympics. So those audiences, um, obviously the, the members of those audiences are more, you um, you know, focused around disability, like whatever that disability is. But there's also the thing you got to keep in mind, though, it's like there may be the individual. And this goes the same for me. Like I, I'm a wheelchair user. I'm the only wheelchair user in my family. But the entire family can support the brand and wear the brand just 
because they not only enjoy the brand, just because they love a convenient shoe. So we find that the same, we find that is the same result with working with um, all these different collaborations, these partners, where there's the individual that needs it for the functional level, but the entire family jumps on board too, just because they love the brand. Yeah. Let, let me ask some questions that from a practical nature. So because you have this zipper on there, do you find that it lasts as long as a regular shoe or does the zipper go out? Great question. Um, so it all depends on like what your the type of activity that you're doing. Um, it will last as long as a regular shoe. Now that said, um, some of our design, we have various different designs of where the zipper position is located. So if you're really tough on your shoes, like for example, my son, <laughs> my son is on his little stride bike going around. He's, he's uh, four years old now. And uh, what, what I found was he was always dragging his foot. He would like go on his stride bike and then he would slow down. He would just put his toe down and he would drag it right across the asphalt. And in doing so, he's dragging it right across that zipper right at the very, very toe. So um, what was happening was the zipper, the thread that actually holds the zipper teeth to the backing, that was actually becoming compromised. And then when it would give way, it would then propagate and would no, no longer be operable. What we did was we came out with new designs where it's more of a short wrap zipper, where the zipper is actually farther back towards the first eye stay, which allows the toe of the shoe to be not only reinforced, but more protected in a, you know, more just like a regular shoe. So you still have the same functionality, the ease of functionality. It's just more of a robust toe for those heavy wearers. Me personally, I'm not really able to wear that shoe. I need that full unobstructed drop in entry, but I'm not dragging my feet. So what we try to do is like create like a widget. We start where there was a starting point, but then we got to the point where we can open up all these other different designs to really cater to this specific need. Yeah, well, that that's great. And then um, it how, how do you what do you do with the designs? I mean, the designs that I looked at on your site just at a glance, like wow, there's something for everybody here. I mean, are are, are the uh, talk to me about the design process and then the manufacturing process. Sure, sure. So Darren, my fellow co-founder, he really spearheads the whole product development side. Um, he has a um, assistant designer that works with him. And then we also work directly with um, our the buyers of our major retailers. And we'll kind of put together some sort of portfolio going into the next season, saying these are the colors we're looking at and get that type of input before actually placing the order for the factory. Um, a lot of the design components that come in, we get we get input from all over the place. I mean, one, we're getting input from the buyers, two, from our own inspiration, but three, direct feedback from the customer. So we have a reviews program and there's so many folks that are just like not only sharing their story, but they're also offering up suggestions. So when we first launched, we had kids, but we're a long ways from there now. We've got de- we've got we've got all genders and then multiple widths and like styles and like low tops, high tops, boots, you name it. So that all came from feedback directly from the customer. So I'd say that's more on the um, design side. On the factory side, it's really a matter of building relationships with various sourcing partners that gets us into factories um, to get the job done. We work with three factories right now, actually we work with four factories. They're all over in China, but uh, we are looking to expand into Colombia, which is really exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, have a virtual assistant in Bogota. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Great young guy. Great young guy. Yeah. So, um, so speaking from my type A personality and, and not having tried your shoe, uh, can I actually, and I'm thinking your son also, if I'm wearing your shoe, can I actually get my shoe on faster? Cause I'm not tying and double tying my, my laces. Cause they're, re- they're ready to go. I'm just like slip in zip. Sh- I'm gone. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So our little tagline was flip, zip, go. <laughs> so it's like you just flip it over, step in, zip it up, and then you're off. Um, the, what, the customers have just been devouring the high tops because every other high top on the market, man, it's a journey to kind of lace that thing up. So with ours, you have the laces still in the high tops. Those laces aren't fake. They're actually functional laces. And what that allows, it gets a custom fit just for you. And then, but you double knot it and then forget about it. Use the zipper going forward. So um, to get in and out of high tops in seconds, I mean, that's just something that we can offer up that I think other brands are not able to. Wow. Well, that's great. Now talk to me about the different 
types of shoes that you've got. I saw some very fashionable, you know, uh, types of shoes. I was like, whoa, I would get confused. But but people that can do design, I mean, they'd be zeroing in. But, you know, as I mentioned, my 15-year-old son, I mean, he's into basketball shoes. So what types of shoe categories do you have and that, you know, are, are popular? Awesome. So when we first started, like, I guess let's start, let's talk about where we started and then where we are now. So when we first started, you know, we had, we just really started with high tops, like kids high tops. Like that was the first place that we, we entered in the market. So I had some low tops as well as high tops. And then with that success, we were able to go smaller in size and then bigger in size to women's men's and then into widths. So originally it was just more high tops and low tops, but from that success and from customer feedback, we also started going into boots, like more lifestyle type boots. Um, and then uh, like more cozy boots. So we have cozy boots on there that have um, kind of a faux shearling lining on the inside, so more for warmth. And then we also went a step further and made a winter boot. Those things just launched last November. And uh, those boots go down to negative 40. I mean, it's just like a super rated, wow. I don't know, it's to keep your foot warm, that's for sure. Um, and then and, uh, boots, that, and, and winter boots are a pain to put on. Oh, completely. Oh, completely. You know, it's funny. We were pitching this. Uh, we were telling our buyers down in Mexico about these boots. And uh, <laughs> they didn't quite get it. They're like, wait, why do we need a winter boot? And then we pitched it to our retail partners up in Canada. And they were just falling all over themselves. Like, oh, my gosh. I don't really need this. So geographically, it kind of makes a difference where you pitch that stuff. But you're asking about your son, um, the sports category. Uh, we did launch a sports category. We have more of a running shoe called the Inclusion One. Uh, we have a second version of that coming out. It's coming spring called Inclusion 2. <laughs> and then uh, we also have one that's um, called the Billy Hoop and the Billy Court, which are more like a tennis shoe and then also a basketball shoe. Yeah. What are you finding in your testing? I mean, as far as having that zipper and all the the push and pull that goes on in athletics, whether it's running or tennis or basketball, it, you know, are you finding that and uh, the, the shoe lasts really well holds up well or there's any issues because of the 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 it's not like your son dragging his foot but it's still it's it's a lot of pressure versus just walking right no most definitely well i mean we're always collecting data so i mean it's it's one of those things you can do you can do data testing on the front end and uh but it only goes so far so you really have to kind of give it a shot throw it out there in the market and uh see how it performs see the feedback that it gets and then make um, make some tweaks as you go forward. I mean, that's the same thing for inclusion two, inclusion one. Um, it uh, it was performing great, but then the feedback coming back was looking for something more, like just saw more on the style line side, and then some of the fabric, uh, changing up some of the fabric around like the actual zipper. So it's that type of feedback that we're looking for. Now for the sports stuff, I mean, for the basketball hoop and court, um, We'd love to have somebody like go out there and just like put this thing to the test and like let us know how it's going. Um, we're just kind of waiting for that, waiting for more feedback to come in if we can make some sort of tweak. Yeah, Steph Curry seems like such a great guy on the Warriors that he, I'm sure he has a shoe contract, but he, he might do it, you know, off off the record type of thing because he just seems like such a great human being. And a, a number of those guys, they have some nice guys on that team. And I'm not putting down any other team, but. Um, find find well, all those be, nice that people would be that'll just awesome. beat it up, you know. Connections to that dude, that'd be incredible. I, I have no connections. I, I just I just like nice people. So my my son loves the Warriors, and so when when we can, we we watch their games because uh, you know I just I, I I like nice guys winning. That's all. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's funny you mentioned that we did make a shoe for Shaquille O'Neal one time, and. Uh, yeah. We, we got connected to him through Zappos and uh, I mean, his foot, I mean, it's a big foot. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know, like a full on King salmon. It's massive. It was like a, I don't even know, size 22. And it was funny when we had that shoe because of the way the shoe opens up, we would open it up, we put another shoe in it. We'd open that up, put another shoe in it. Open up, <laughs> another shoe. So it, was, it was like one of those dolls. You just keep opening it up and then yeah. more and more shoes keep popping out. Well, everything I read about him is he seems like a super guy too. You know, he was a cop. Uh, he just signed up to be a cop just to serve his community. Oh, Can wow. you imagine getting pulled over by a guy that big? No, I don't. <laughs> Fortunately, nice, you know, yeah. but I, I've just heard great things about him too. Just a, just a great guy. So, uh, okay. We got to stay on track here. So um, let's also talk about another part of your journey. You know, you are in a wheelchair. 
And, um, you, you know, I don't, it, your partner does a lot of things, but you're doing a lot of things in the business. And what thoughts would you have for leaders out there who, um, how to work effectively and really always, I, I think one of the main things that strikes me is, um, you say you have a sincere leader. It's like, hey, I just want good people. Okay. I, I don't know, care whether they're in a wheelchair or they have some other disability or they've got purple hair with pink polka dots. I, I don't care. I just want people that can do the job. Um, what are the things to keep in mind when you're, if you're going to be working with someone who has any type of disability to really have a great relationship with that person? I mean, the metrics have to be achieved, but I'm, I'm talking, I'm concerned about the relationship. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. Um, and also, I mean, another thing to piggyback on that is just the, the dynamic of a small business. So in, in small business, I mean, you have to be, it's crucial to be efficient um, and you need to hit those numbers. So, um, I mean, that, that's that's not a disability or non-disability qualifier. It's just like the way to, to survive the day and keep the lights on, you got to be efficient. You got to keep meet those numbers. Um, with everybody on this planet, everybody's got strengths. And everybody's got weaknesses. So as we're putting the team together and, uh, you know, you know, conquering these tasks, it's a matter of focusing on the strengths. And if someone has um, some sort of weakness in some area, um, move them out of there. Put them into a spot where they excel. They can really, like, you know, leverage, like, those strengths. So Darren's strengths and my strengths, we have different strengths. So um, I would work more on the, the customer service side, like answering all of the emails would be coming in answering um you know doing like spoke speaking like this to kind of give a uh, information about the brand and then darren has more of an operational mindset so he'd be able to work on the actual setting up and getting packages out as well as conceptual looking at like the designs and then also like managing like the finances so um that was like kind of the the, the original foundation where it was just the two of us where I was more outwardly and then he was more like internally running the business. So but then as you gain more people, like getting to the team, um, again, it's just like, okay, well, where are the gaps that we have? Find the gaps in the business and figure out who the best person to fill it. So our next player was more of a shoe, a shoe dog, shoe person, a shoe networker that uh, would be able to open up these doors for us to get to where we needed to go. So I know I, this isn't really like disability, like focused. It was just more finding like the right player for the right fit. And um, it's been really exciting for us because every single person on our team has been referred to by someone within the team. We've not gone outside the team yet. That's great. And I think you bring up a really good point that, um, and, and I teach this when I'm doing my leadership coaching and consulting and things is that so often leaders think that they're there for correction. Mm -hmm. And really, if you can focus on someone's strengths and help them strike that strength to a higher level, always be working on the strengths to build the strengths, not just an area where there's improvement. And then you brought up this really important thing that, you know, you may have a person and and they're good fit with the company culture and you like them, or maybe you don't, but they're a good fit with the culture, but they're in the wrong role. Right. So don't just, don't just immediately say, Hey, this person's, you know, not hitting the metrics in that role. We got to get rid of them. Well, wait a minute. Person not hitting the metrics in the role but they they are really committed to our our mission, our values, our vision. Um, is there another place in the company where we could try them and have that as a com a conversation as a positive conversation rather than a punitive one? Uh, so I think you bring up a great point. Yeah, I, I I cannot agree more. And we've had that experience multiple times where they're fit in the cultures like we want them to be part of the team. And it wasn't the right fit. We had one. We had one person that bounced into three different departments. He started in customer service and he was doing great, but he he like his his mind was kind of elsewhere. He wanted to do something different. And then we got him into sales, and that just wasn't quite right because sales like you have to kind of like the talk and being able to like jump on the call and be able like to be that larger than life kind of um, characteristic. You know, sometimes it doesn't always have to be that way, but. Um, he was he was struggling, and then we moved him more into operations, and he's sitting out of the park. So it's uh, it's been it's so rewarding for him, but it's also so rewarding for us to finally see him grow as much as he has being in this new spot. Well, and and it says so much 
You know, one of the things with employees, I, I just, and, and particularly in the culture we have now where there's so many sound bites that are negative and there's so much divisiveness and there's fake news and, and, and things, I think particularly the younger generation, the things I'm reading about them and my engagement with them is they, they really lack trust. And because they're being there, they realize there's so much lying going on um, or exaggeration, which is kind of the same thing in, in many regards. But for you to stick with the person through three changes, where you're encouraging them, you're training them, you're investing them, it's like, wow, these guys really are my back. And, you know, they're living out the value. I don't know what your company values are, but they're living out the values and what this company stands for. They're real. I can trust them. That's that's invaluable. Yeah. You know? I, I, and again, I can't agree more. And, I mean, and I love you brought up values and stuff because it's not only values within the company. It's also values that we're projecting and receiving from the customer. And uh, it's like we, we want to create we want to create a work floor, a workforce that is more than a job. It's like you're not just coming here to do your job and collect your paycheck and go home. It's like you're coming here. We want you to come here to add value and be inspired by what you're doing and seeing that you're making a difference in the world. I mean, that's our that's our slogan, making a measurable difference in the world one foot at a time. So we want every single person that's under this roof is working to achieve that objective. I mean, even the people on the line that are grabbing a pair of shoes off the shelf and putting them in the box, that package, they're the last one to touch that box that goes out before a potential customer has a life-changing moment. So that's vitally important, even down to the person on the line checking it out, putting a stamp on it, sending it out the door. Yeah, I I I totally agree with you. And I had one thought and I lost it, but there was a there was a I, I forget his name right now. He told a story. He had um Two employees, three employees, three employees, I think. Uh, well, I think it was two employees. One was doing um, receivable. One was doing shipping. So they were both in the shipping department. And this was at a network, a computer networking company. This was many years ago. Tim was his name. I can't remember the company, but it was up in uh, Rhode Island. And he told the story where he met with them. And I think it was Axion Networking or whatever, but... Um, he and his VP met with them. I mean, here they were in like two of the lowest jobs in the company. Okay. They're either shipping or receiving. And they met with them and they said, hey, uh, you know, um, we're just not sensing the company spark in you. You know, it's just not there. And I, I want you to know. So what happens when you don't, oh, it was one person in shipping, one person in, in um, accounts, accounts, uh, it was accounts. It was, they were both in accounting and then one person in shipping. So it said, what happens when you don't bill customers? Well, we don't have money to pay bills. That's right. What happens to the um, accounts payable person? What happens when you don't pay our vendors? Well, then we don't have any product that we can provide product. Company. That's right. And then to the shipper, what happens when you don't ship things or receive things? Well, you guys aren't going to be able to do anything. That's right. So actually, if you think about it, you're the heart of our company. When you stop beating, the company stops. So they came up with this thing and with the VP, because they reported to the VP, because it was a pretty small company. So they said, um, what we're going to do is uh, we want you guys to come up with ideas on how to improve things. We want to hear from you. Okay. Each time you come up with an idea, we'll give you a marble. Here's a bag. And when you get 10 marbles, VP is taking you out to lunch, wherever you want to go. Okay. And um, we really want to get you engaged. Now they didn't, I don't think they said it to them, but the business was going to double in the next year. Mm. So they're going to have to hire three more people at the productivity those people were at, um, at level they were at. What happened instead was all three of them earned at least one lunch with the VP. And they, they did double the business and they didn't have to hire anyone. These people were so much more engaged, so much more into it, because all of a sudden they realized what you said, that last person who puts the, the shoes in a box, is actually really important. But it takes management to engage them to help them understand that versus just, oh, yeah, they're the custodian or the shipper or whatever type of thing. So my kudos to you, Billy. Great job. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, it's been a it's been a fun ride and a wild one with ups and downs and twists and turns, but uh, we we continue on, don't we? <laughs>
Well, uh, you know, you, you uh, I love the way you're engaging with people and care about people. So um, if they want, if anyone here on the podcast wants to learn more about you, um, where would you recommend they go? So uh, billyfootwear.com, billyfootwear.com is the mothership. Um, and on that, and if you're looking for uh, where the shoes are in store um, on that, on that website, there is a drop down that says store locations. And if you click on there, there's there's little goat pins actually all over the planet. So, uh, you know, all throughout the United States, uh, we have some in Australia, um, Canada, Europe, um, South America. So it's uh, it's been it's been pretty wild. And then on social, uh, we keep it really simple. It's at Billy Footwear. So that's for Facebook, Instagram. Boy, there's so many channels now: TikTok, YouTube, yada yada yada. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Billy. I've really enjoyed it, and I'm sure our audience benefited from. It. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in today. If you like the episode with Billy, please subscribe, leave us a comment or a rating. We'd love feedback. It's great. And don't forget our sponsor, Habitly.com. Check it out. Seven days free. These are the competitive soft skills. Great companies are training their employees and especially their leaders. So they're living out their values, their mission, their vision. Thank you very much again for being here. We've got more great guests coming. Stay tuned. Bye for now.